Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm finally gonna start welding and make a steel frame for this electronics desk. I wanted the border of the table to be a hardwood so it wouldn't get dinged up too badly. I started with a strip of oak and cut it right down the middle. I chopped the pieces down to make them more manageable and then cut a 45 degree miter on the end of all four pieces. By setting the pieces in place, I could mark where the miter needed to start on the opposite edge. I needed to cut the miter opposite to the one I had cut before, so I used a square to move my line around the piece of wood. Then I cut two pieces of wood at the same time so that they matched. The tabletop itself was just a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood that I already had cut, so I laid it on top of a couple of pieces of melamine to give a nice, even, smooth surface to add the trim. I added some glue to each piece and then held it in place with some brad nails. A handy thing about melamine is that the wood glue won't stick to it, so it's a nice surface to be able to glue things up, but not worry about gluing your workpiece to the actual table. With all four of these pieces in place, the tabletop was pretty much done. There were some small gaps in my miters, and one of the edges of the plywood wasn't perfectly straight, so I filled all the gaps with some wood filler, and after it dried, I just sanded it down. To finish the top, I added some risers so it would be up off the table, then I used a tongue oil finish and wiped on with an old t-shirt. This finish dries into a nice hard coating, and you can add several coats to get even more protection. The frame was made from 1 inch steel square tubing. I marked off the sizes that I wanted with a sharpie and then used a square to draw that line all the way around the pipe. I cut these pieces off with a cutoff wheel, but the wheel was not large enough to go straight through the pipe, so I ended up with several cuts, which made for a jagged edge. To clean these up, I lined up the smooth edge against a piece of wood and clamped them all together. Then I could use a grinding wheel to smooth out the opposite end to make sure that they were all the same length. I did the same process for the longer sides, but I got better at cutting them eventually and didn't have to grind down as much. I set the pieces in place and used a magnet to hold them at a 90 degree angle while I clamped the pieces together. Then it was time to start welding. I used a MIG welder, and I have a little bit of experience, but it's been a very long time, so I started by some spot welds just to hold the pieces in place, and then went back and tried to fill in the line as I got a little more comfortable with it. With the frame held together, I flipped it over and filled in the rest of the welds. I got a little bit more comfortable, but I still have a long way to go to be what you would call a welder. I did burn through a couple of small spots and had to go back and fill them, but then I went back with the grinder and smoothed everything out. If you're like me and you have to grind a lot to hide your mistakes, be sure not to grind in one area for too long because it actually heats the steel up and you can see it. Once this one was complete, I made another frame for the opposite side in the exact same way. Then I cut one piece to go across between the two frames. Again, I transferred the line all the way around so I could try to cut it off as straight as possible. I made a mark at the center of each one of the frames, then I lined up my cross piece right with that mark. With it lined up to center, I welded it in place. Then I just flipped it around and did the exact same thing for the opposite edge. Once again, I had to flip it over and finish welding all the different seams. I did a lot more grinding, and then I went back with the wire brush to get rid of the surface rust that was on several of these pieces. I was hoping to stop the frame here, but there was a little bit of lateral flex that I wasn't happy with. So I had to cut another piece to fit across the back. Unfortunately, I was out of one inch square tubing, but I did have a piece of half inch, and it worked just the same. Adding that piece made the frame a lot more rigid, and it was exactly what I wanted. So after some more smoothing and sanding, I took it out into the yard and added a coat of polyurethane. With it dry, I brought it into the office, and the top dropped right on. Then I added a cutting mat for me to do some work on, and since it slid around, I used some painter's tape to hold it in place. I added some containers for my electronics components and then all of my electronics tools. My soldering iron, some small screwdrivers, a multimeter, some wire strippers, and an anti-static mat. Then I had to move all of the actual components into the drawers, which took a really long time. The last thing was to make a holder for all of my spools of wire and electrical tape. I used some scrap MDF and cut down a base that was the same length as my component cabinet. I cut two other pieces that were the same size and then laid my largest spool in place to mark where the dowel should be and where the top should be. I made some rough sketch marks because it didn't really matter where they were, then I attached both pieces with double-sided tape. 
Using a backer board to prevent blowout, I drilled a hole through both pieces at the same time, and then on the bandsaw, I trimmed out the shape that I had made. After prying them apart, I just sanded the edges with a sanding block. These pieces got attached to the base with some glue and some brads, just to hold them in place while the glue dried. Then I did a couple of coats of black spray paint just to kind of hide the fact that it was MDF. I stuck a dowel through the holes and sprayed it while I turned it. It actually worked better than I expected it to, and it was just a matter of trimming it down to length once I was finished. With everything dry, I just put on all the different spools I had, and it was ready to go in place. So there's a few things that I still need for this and I'd rather make them than buy them. I need a benchtop power supply that can supply different voltages. I need a fume extractor for soldering and I need some fixed lighting and an overhead camera rig so I can film what I'm doing here. Those are things that I would just rather make and there are videos out there how to make all those things so I'm not sure that I'll do videos on them. If you're interested in me doing a video on those things, please let me know in the comments. There's several reasons that I wanted this station here rather than being in the shop. I wanted to keep all the sawdust out of what's gonna happen on this table because this table is gonna be for making electronics, which I hope to do a lot more of soon. It's going to be for finishing all the 3D printed pieces, which I also hope to continue doing more of, and to have a place to do some more model making and prop making, because that is also something I want to do more of. I wanted a space out of the mess of my shop to be able to do some smaller, more intricate things that need a little bit more attention, and have all the components that I need right here. Now you'll notice in the video I didn't put any really close-up shots of my welding, and frankly that's because I'm not very good at it yet. This is the first real welding I've done in about 10 years, and I didn't think it was necessary to show close-ups so that people could pick apart how bad or how good I did yet. I just need to practice. And in this case, this desk is something for me. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. And so this was a really good way for me to practice my welding to hopefully get better at it. With that in mind, don't let the fear of welding and the fear of not being good at it stop you from actually trying. You have to practice to be able to get good at stuff like this. And square tubing is a really good way to practice because it's easy to make 90 degree angles. So if you wanted to make something like this, like a frame for a desk or a table, it's really easy to use square tubing to practice your welding. And the grinder is your friend. The grinder can fix and hide a lot of your mistakes as you get better. I do plan on doing more welding in my future projects, so hopefully I'll just get better at it the more I do. Before I go, I wanted to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Sponsorships like that from companies like Audible help me to do these videos so that I can give them to you for free. And a good way for you to support me is to go to audible.com slash make stuff. You can sign up for a free account. You get a free book. There's 180,000 titles, tons and tons and tons of really good stuff. Right now I'm listening to Off to Be the Wizard by Scott Meyer. It's a really funny kind of nerdy story that I'm really enjoying and if you like the types of stuff that I like you will probably like this book. I don't want to give anything away but it's about a computer hacker kid and then it ends up being about wizards so if you're interested in any of that stuff you should go check it out. Like I said a great way to support I Like to Make Stuff is to go to audible.com slash make stuff. You get a free month, a free audiobook, and you can cancel at any time. So thanks to Audible for sponsoring this. Thank you for watching this. I hope you like this project and if you did or if you have any suggestions or thoughts please leave them in the comments below or at alictomakestuff.com. As always I love to see the stuff that you guys are working on and I love it when you share that stuff with me so please continue to do that on any of the social networks. I've got a lot more videos and projects for you to check out. If you're on mobile you can check out the cards here. If you're on desktop you can check out the annotations here. Either way thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.